Hey there, Clarifiles and Clarifilettes. It's been a while since I've done a video, but a few days ago, a customer dropped me an email and asked a question that I thought you might be interested in hearing and also in considering the answer to. So, in this coming video here, we're going to be talking about why clarinets are not made in one piece, why do they come apart in the middle, and what are people trying to achieve when they make a one-piece clarinet and what are the plus and minuses of doing so so if you're interested in that hang on we're going to be talking about it the two-piece clarinet is a very convenient clarinet coming apart in the middle you can of course have a shorter case very much more compact easier to carry and so on and so forth but that's really not a very good reason for doing something because the clarinet is not made to carry around in a compact convenient case it's made to play so is there any advantage to having the clarinet in two pieces rather in one and I'll have to say that there are some advantages and we're going to discuss those but are there disadvantages to having it if that way and I'll say there are definitely disadvantages to having it that way. The primary disadvantage, really, is this little guy right here, the C-sharp, G-sharp key. Now, what's the disadvantage? The disadvantage is that actually this tone hole should not be placed here. You know, that's why your high F is always kind of funky and your, and your low C-sharp is kind of, you know, fuzzy and really not doesn't have the same shape and clarity and timbre and everything that other notes have it's because this tone right here should be right here where the clarinet is being put together right on that joint so the clarinet should be the clarinet the tone hole of the C sharp G sharp should be placed lower right here where the joint is put together and the tone hole should be larger now with a larger tone hole you're going to get more flexibility more resonance and a deeper richer sound so and that's a big advantage up here your low c sharp your g sharp they always have a kind of funky sound and a funky color and not much flexibility compared to all the tones around it well uh, on the say uh, full berm system clarinet where you actually have an articulated c sharp g sharp the makers actually put the hole here it's really kind of a big mess, uh, but they do get the hole and get the right size. Um, and that should improve things. My own experience with the full berm system clarinet is that I've never had one that played in tune. I've never tested one that played in tune. And I maybe that's primarily because they were all large bore clarinets and quite sharp in the right hand low register. And it has nothing to do with the fact that they're full berm system clarinets. Uh, but nevertheless, they do put it there. But that's one of the big advantages so you see with the one-piece clarinet is that you can put that G-sharp right there because the clarinet doesn't come apart. And you can put it right there on the top and you could even articulate it if you wanted. Those are really cool features, especially if you're going to play Schumann's First Symphony and to do, the, do the Spring Symphony and do that exchange in the first movement that's really kind of crazy and difficult to do. Um, you should look it up if you're not familiar with it. So, yes, big advantage right there. But is that enough advantage to actually switch to a one-piece clarinet as opposed to a two-piece clarinet? Are there disadvantages to having the one-piece clarinet? That's what we're going to talk about next. Well, one could say going back to the cases that it's kind of inconvenience because they're carrying around a case that you know at least probably this long and you're constantly banging into people and banging into things with that case uh, but again inconvenience is not an adequate reason for doing or not doing something on the clarinet the whole question is is do you get a better musical result by doing a certain thing or refraining from doing something else. The real main reason, objection, that I see for the one-piece clarinet 
is that with the one piece clarinet, if the clarinet is wood and it cracks, the whole clarinet's cracked. It's not just a matter of replacing the upper joint. The whole clarinet either has to be replaced or you have to live with the kind of pinning and stuff that people do to try to shore up the cracks and, and stop up the leaking from the cracking wood. So you pay a lot of money for a one-piece clarinet. They're difficult to make. They're pretty expensive. And then your clarinet cracks. So there you are. That's not a good cosmetic reason. And it's not a good, and a good technical reason either because there's no guarantee that once a crack is opened up and you pin it or you do whatever that has to be done to, to, to seal it up, there's no guarantee it's not going to open up again. So there you are with one one piece clarinet that's cracked. That's not particularly cool. But still for me, that's not the main reason for not having a one piece clarinet. The main reason has to do with the clarinet playing in tune and in tune with itself. Generally in tune and in tune with itself. What do I mean by that? Well, the clarinet, when you begin to play it, the clarinet warms up faster up here than it does down here. And basically what you end up with on the clarinet is that you have a changing relationship in regard to the fine tuning of the horn from the right hand to the left hand. Now this is true in general that the clarinet warms up uh, faster up here than it does down here. But it's, it's also very very true even more so when you get on the stage and under hot stage lights. Often I've heard clarinet players play in recitals and they start out in tune and then as they warm up the right hand gets warmer and warmer and so you begin to hear notes that tend to be sharp already which are the clarion D, clarion C and B. You, you begin to hear those notes really sail and also in the low register the low register right hand pitches get sharper and sharper in relationship to the left hand. Now if you have a one piece clarinet you are stuck. As a clarinet designer I have no idea where I would place the tone holes and size the tone holes precisely if I were tuning a one piece clarinet because as you play and the clarinet warms up thoroughly throughout the bore the relationship, tuning relationship changes. So exactly where do you put those tone holes and how do you size those tone holes to get the best overall result? I don't know. It's a complete quandary to, for me. But with the two-piece clarinet, the fact that you have the right hand that can be pulled, then as the right hand warms up and gets sharper and sharper in relationship to the left hand, you can actually pull out at the middle joint. Now, how do you know how far to pull out at the middle joint? Well, we know that the violin, of course, always tunes on open strings. And that's why the old boy always gives an A, because that's an open string on the violin. It's an a, Actually, it's an open string on every one of the strings, the, the bass, the cello, the viola, and the violin. So, all these guys can start by tuning the A and then tuning all the other strings in relationship to the A. Well, we don't have any strings on the clarinet, but what we do have is we have, uh, when the clarinet's completely open, we have an open G, a concert F, right? Um, I usually like to tune that G with the right hand three fingers closed, but that's just me. Uh, anyway, you have the open G. And when you pull the barrel out, you can tune the open G, so the open G will get very well in tune. The right hand tending to be somewhat sharp already to the left hand. You can also tune the octave Gs. After you've tuned this open G by pulling the barrel, you can pull the middle joint and then test the octave G, open G, and slur to the G above to see if they're in tune. Now, the reason that I like to tune that way, and of course you can't tune that way on a one-piece clarinet, you can't tune at all. You can't adjust the right hand in any way once it begins to sail sharper and sharper. 
But the reason I like to tune that way is because these long pipe notes in the clarion do tend to be on the sharp side and they will get sharper as we warm up. So when you pull out to tune these octave G's, you're, what you're doing is you're partially tuning the concert B flat or the clarion C by pulling the barrel that which pull, uh, tunes this G. And then when you pull out here, you're even tuning the concert C, the concert B flat, the clarion C even more by pulling out here. Well, what's the advantage of that? The advantage is that not only do you generally get your clarinet in tune when you tune that way, you get the clarinet better in tune with itself. Now, let's take a one-piece clarinet and say you find that your clarion uh, B flat, your right hand clarion B flat right here, that concert C or concert B flat. You find that it's sharp. Well, you pull your barrel. Well, your throat tones are sharp too, but they're not that sharp. So you pull your barrel and keep pulling your barrel to finally you get your concert B flat in tune down here. But you've had to pull the barrel so much that now the throat tones are really flat. In fact, the left hand of the upper low register, Chalumeau, is flat. Okay? So you've sacrificed your whole upper shawyumo and your throat tones to get one note in tune here and satisfy your director who says, play me a concert B flat. So when you share the, the adjustment to get the pitch down to your, your uh, concert B flat, your clarion C, when you share the adjustment by pulling part of the way to tune the throat tones here, and then part of the way to tune the octave G's, then you get a very well in tune concert B flat, plus the clarinet right and left hand get better in tune with themselves in terms of how they're relating to one another. So lots of advantages for the two-piece clarinet. It's not just convenient so you can carry around a little box. No, and it's not just convenient so if one joint cracks, you can replace it and you don't have to replace the whole clarinet. No, the real reason is the fact that with this middle joint here, you have the ability to tune the clarinet and get it in better relationship, better tuning with itself uh, in the whole process of playing a recital or playing a performance. When you take away the ability to tune the clarinet, in the middle and get the relationships better as the clarinet warms up uh, more and more in the right hand, uh, then when you when you take that away, uh, you make your your um, you make the task of playing well in tune more and more difficult. It's not enough just to generally tune the clarinet, say on one note. Do you have to use tuning on the clarinet? Your ability to adjust the clarinet to tune the clarinet so it's not only generally in tune, but it's as well in tune with itself as it possibly can be. And when you do that, it'll make your job a lot easier. And if you want to do that, you're much better off to have a two-piece clarinet instead of a one-piece clarinet. And that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. I hope you enjoyed this. If you like it, then click subscribe. And if you're interested in good clarinet equipment, wonderful clarinets at wonderful prices, check out our website. We've got some great products, bass clarinets, um, wonderful C clarinet, a spectacular C clarinet, and uh, B flat clarinets at different prices that are affordable for anyone that play as well as any clarinets you can find at any price. So, and with that, I'll say, Thank you very much for listening. We appreciate your patronage. We appreciate you watching our videos, and we hope that they help you.